Are you ready to dive into detoxing after breast implant illness and your explant surgery? I know how intimidating this topic can be, but in this video, we're gonna have fun. You're gonna learn a lot, and it's my hope that everything that we go through today in this video, you will be able to implement immediately. Hey, it's Christina, the founder of Size Happy and the admin of the best Facebook group on Facebook, the Simplant Illness Rejuvenation and Education with Christina. In this video, this one video, we're going to cover, I got a lot of notes over here, so don't mind me if I look over here, but we're gonna cover how to detox, when should you start, what should you take, what should you avoid, why it can be so discouraging, um, why does detox come in waves? How do you know for sure that it's detox symptoms and not like your BII symptoms coming back? And so much more. We're also gonna dive into binders and what they are and why they are so important. We're gonna go into detoxing in the right order. So starting from the bottom up, why doing a cleanse alongside a detox is best. And towards the end of this video, after the training, I'll be talking about my 12 week healing and detox program called the BII Bridge, which is specifically made for women like you who have breast implant illness and are either preparing for or recovering from an explant. Basically everything in this video is inside of that program. So if you're feeling like, wow, this is a lot of information and it's really great, but I would love to work alongside somebody who just kind of gets me and she's gone through it and like has everything laid out, then we can talk about that later. But I just wanted to throw that out there. Before we get into everything, I want you to go grab a piece of paper and a pencil or something that you, you know, if you like type in, something to type with, because you will want to take a lot of notes if you are serious about going through a detox and like learning what you should be doing and avoiding and you know, when you should be starting and the whole shebang. So I will wait right here, just hit pause and come back and we will get into it. All right, are we ready? Remember, this training is gonna be fun. I don't want it to be intimidating or boring or you know, cause any more confusion or overwhelm, which I know that detoxing does. So we're gonna have some fun. So go ahead, get yourself into a fun energy and let's get to it. How I have this video laid out is I want to start with like right out of the bat, coming out of your explant surgery and starting there and like what you should be doing and focusing on week by week. But before I get into that, if you haven't explanted yet, I personally would not recommend going through any kind of detox while you still have breast implants in because what can happen is you can potentially pull toxins from your breast implants and those heavy metals. And if you were to do that, you could potentially have something called a retox which is when you go through a detox and your body's detoxing and the toxins come out of your tissues and out of your organs and everything like that and they circulate throughout your body but they don't get eliminated properly and so they can potentially get shoved deeper into your cells and into your tissues go through a retox and you know probably have more fatigue more brain fog headaches irritability all of that and on top of that i feel personally like it's just a waste of my money and my time and my energy to go through a detox and try to, to detox toxins out of my body if I still have toxins in my body. Some women will say that they did detoxes before they explanted and they were, they were fine. That's great, I'm not taking that away from them and I don't think they're lying either. Um, but for me personally, I just, I'm really good friends with a lot of detox experts and we all kind of agree that detoxing is best to wait for after your explant. So just kind of want to throw that out there again. You know, I want to also make clear that I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a plastic surgeon. So nothing here is to be taken as medical advice um, or to go against your medical team's, you know, advice or suggestions or whatever they're wanting you to do or follow. So this is just 
my recommendations, my suggestions on what I've done and what I've helped other women do. All right, I have some goodies here. So the first four weeks after your explant, you really want to focus on and double down on your gut health and your immune system. So I have some things that I took from my kitchen. Um, you want to not only take prebiotics, or I'm sorry, probiotics, but you also want prebiotics. So prebiotics are what feeds the probiotics. So things like apple cider vinegar, bone broth, um, kimchi, delicious, love kimchi, and a good probiotic. I'm just kind of showing you what I had in my kitchen and um, some kombucha. These would all be some things to incorporate into your day consistently at, right after your explant, just to really help your gut. They're very nourishing, they're very cleansing, and they're very gentle, but they're very effective. So, you know, focus on the prebiotics and the, and the probiotics, you know, vitamin C, um, zinc, D, B complex, you know, as far as supplements go. And of course, just eating really good, staying hydrated, um, making sure that you eat um, at least one gram of protein, up to 1.2 grams of protein per pound that you weigh. And the reason why I'm such a stickler on protein after explant is because there have been lots of studies around when you consume adequate protein right after surgery, it just helps with rebuilding and repairing of muscle tissue and just helping your wound to heal faster. So, you know, definitely eat good. Make sure you're focusing on getting in enough protein, fruits and veggies, carbs, the whole shebang. I think we're all very knowledgeable when it comes to nutrition. Um, moving your body. I have a whole video on what to expect after explant surgery and what to avoid after explant surgery. So I won't really get into that today, but go back to that video and that'll just kind of explain like the things to do in regards to right after your explant surgery. So the first four weeks, we're just going to focus on rest, realignment, um, adjusting, and I had something here. So we have, okay, so read, rest, readjust, and realign. I had to remember that. And that's why I have my whole section of notes here. So read. I have this book here. A lot of you may have already seen the documentary. And I feel like it's the perfect time when you're recovering from your explant to read this book. This book, I mean, I'll try to show you here while I'm doing this, but I have highlighted so much in this book. It, this book is amazing. The documentary is on Netflix, I think, still, but it's all about healing and using your mind and your thoughts and your beliefs and the power of those things to help you heal faster, easier, better, and just everything's just, you know, not so restrictive and so, you know, I'm so worried and all of that. And it's just really believing in your body's power to heal you and to recover from your explant surgery. So read, rest, um, readjust to everything that's going on and also realign with what's going on in your life, you know, and who you want to be now that the fatigue is gone and the brain fog has gone and all of that stuff. So I always like to take that first month to just kind of get reacquainted with myself and who I am past the breast implants, get reacquainted with my new body, my new breasts, right? Get reacquainted with how things are with my spouse and you know that whole dynamic of all this that goes along with explanting. So just taking that first month to focus on your mindset and your emotions and your mental health and your self-care and also your gut and your immune system. Um, I'm always telling women that the four things that I really think we should all focus on right after our explant is self-care, forgiveness, rest, and patience. So just take what you will out of all that and um, apply it to your life as you see fit. So then now we're going to bump up to about week five after your explant. This is when you can safely start 
detoxing. And the reason why you want to wait five weeks and you don't want to really do anything for the first four weeks is you want to allow your body to naturally heal, cleanse, repair, rebuild at its own pace without, you know, pushing in anything that could potentially, you know, force too much to happen. I've seen it a, a couple of times where women started a detox a little bit too early within like the first couple of weeks and they ended up not feeling good. So, you know, the first, the first month is just really about allowing your body to do everything at its own pace and trusting your body and that she's doing everything that she can to heal you during that time and to cleanse you um, and to get you back in order. So week five, you can start. And so what you wanna do is you want to detox in the correct order. And I mentioned earlier in this video is you wanna start from the bottom up. Now what this means is it's best to start with a colon cleanse and a GI cleanse. And then you move up to a liver cleanse and then kidneys and then um, blood and heavy metals and then um, your lymphatic system. So you wanna kind of do everything in order, take it system by system. And the reason why this is best is because let's just say you're somebody who doesn't have regular bowel movements, or maybe you're just a little backed up, which most of us are. So you want to um, open up that detox pathway of your GI and just you know make sure everything's really cleared and flushed out first. Um, before starting a liver cleanse because let's say you just went ahead and you got one of these generic liver cleanses or kidney cleanses or whatever systems that you might see like at sprouts or somewhere right and you start that but your colon's backed up what's going to happen is you are going to detox um, you are going to detox and those things the toxins are going to circulate but they're going to have a harder time getting eliminated so to say because you're so backed up so you really want to make sure that that detox pathway is opened up first. Um, this is when you focus on like digestive enzymes and your probiotics and really taking care of your prebiotics and gently flushing everything out. Then you wanna move up to the liver and work on that system. Um, in the BII bridge, we do the GI colon cleanse for two weeks. Then we do the liver cleanse for one week and we focus on like milk thistle and dandelion um, and liver nourishing uh, foods. And then we will move to the kidneys. We do the kidneys for one week also, and we'll incorporate foods like grapes and cranberries and raspberries. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting a couple, but just some really powerful kidney nourishing foods alongside of some um, supplements. And then from the kidneys, you will work on the blood and I'm gonna show you, this is one of, it's just my go-to and it's recommended in the BII Bridge, but it's burdock root. This is a powerful but gentle um, blood purification supplement out there. So go through some burdock root, um, cleanse your blood, and then after that you'll go and you'll work on your lymphatic system, which is like the, it's like it picks up all the debris in your system and so it can get really sluggish because it doesn't have a pump like the heart so your lymph fluid can get very sluggish especially if you're laying around a lot and you're not moving around a lot which let's face it not many of us are doing that for like the first at least three weeks after our explant so things that you can do for the lymph are dry brushing hopping on a rebounder for 10 minutes twice a day doing some hydrotherapy, and, which is alternating back and forth between very hot and very cold showers, as hot and as cold as you can stand, and then going through a lymphatic massage. So finding a massage therapist that specializes in lymphatic um, massages and to really just get those lymphatic systems, or lymphatic, the lymphatic juices going throughout your body and just picking up um, all of that debris. So that's how we would do it um, in the BII bridge. That's how you should do it in general, whether you go through it or not. But you wanna work system by system, working from the bottom all the way up. Now, all of those would be for a total of eight weeks. And what I would recommend is go through those for the eight weeks and then take about four weeks off 
and then go through it one more time. After you go through it that second phase, that you know, that second time, then you can take a whole year off and just follow that like once or twice a year, really all you need just to make sure that you're keeping your detox pathways open um, and you're really just helping your body to rid itself of those toxins. Because obviously not only are the breast implants right here, not only are these made up of nothing but toxins, but we are bombarded with toxins everywhere in our air and our soil and our food um i mean it's just it's everywhere Cos cosmetics household cleaning products all of that so it's just really important to always be doing some kind of cleanse and just nourishing your organs and especially your detox pathways and so the two areas that i talked about like in the image of like don't miss these two things if you're going through a detox the first thing is binders, which we will get into. And the second thing is your mindset and just the power of your mind and your thoughts and your beliefs. So first thing is let's get into binders and what they are and why they're so important and a couple of things that you'll want to do or avoid when you're taking a binder. So a binder is anything, do I have? Uh, let me see if I have a binder here, sorry. Oh, yeah, okay, so this is a very gentle binder. It's called Activated Charcoal. There's also bentonite clay, there's zeolites. Um, there's also chlorella and spirulina, although those don't fully get rid of the toxins. They're very weak binders. So I personally don't really suggest or recommend those, but you know, activated charcoal, bentonite clay, um, zeolites especially, you'll want to take throughout the entire detox. So what a binder does is it literally binds to the toxin and it makes it large enough and heavy enough to be able to get eliminated out of the body. And so where a lot of women go wrong unintentionally because they just don't know about a binder. They just think like, I'm just gonna go through the detox, right? So detox is one part of detoxing, but then there's also taking those binders. So you'll take a binder the whole time that you're going through a detox. Um, I always say start small or with a low dose. So if you buy a brand and it says to take two, I would always just start with one just because I'm very sensitive to everything it seems like so i always just take one for a few days just to make sure like it doesn't mess up my stomach or you know i get an upset stomach or i get weird headaches or i get dizzy or just weird symptoms that i get from certain supplements so just take, take like a half dose for a couple days or if you have like the loose powder um then take like uh, like half of a teaspoon and start there and then you can do like three quarters of a teaspoon move up to a teaspoon and um, just keep working your way up but I always recommend with anything, with any supplement or anything, to always just start with like a half dose and just see how your body responds. So with binders, because they do bind to everything, you wanna make sure that you don't take them for two hours before or after a meal or before or after like a supplement or any kind of medication, especially like heart medication, or thyroid medication or hormone medication, whatever kind of medication you're on you wanna take the binders away from all of that because it will bind to those um, chemicals and compounds in your medications and um, in your food and pull those out too. And so some, some women, if they don't do this properly and they don't like reintroduce nutrients when they're going through a detox and taking binders, they can actually deplete themselves of a lot of essential nutrients. So. You want to make sure that you are also remineralized, remineralizing um, during and after your detox as well so that you're not deficient in these minerals when you're detoxing. Um, another thing is binders can make you constipated. So if you do find that you are constipated or if you're having any kind of digestive issues, it's always best to, especially when you're going through any kind of detox, to just stay up on your hydration and stay up on your water to constantly be, you know, eliminating through urine um, all of those toxins and just make sure that you're flushing everything out. So take the binder away from food and make sure that you're definitely 
um, drinking enough water throughout the entire detox phase of everything. So binders are really, really important. Um, if you don't take a binder, again, you could possibly have a retox, which is when you detox, but not all the toxins were able to get out during that detox and they could actually push themselves even further and deeper into your cells and tissues, which is not what you want. So, um, you know, some common detox symptoms are fatigue, um, brain fog, headache, irritability. Um, I feel like I'm missing one, but those are very common and they will pass. And those are symptoms that your body is like doing its thing as much as those symptoms suck, right? So um, that's, that's the gist of binders in a nutshell. If you have any questions about them, a specific brand that you found, anything like that, I'm more than happy to take a look at anything. I just wanted to, you know, keep this very simple as to, you know, what everything is and how to follow any kind of detox. But if you want to get into specifics about anything that I've talked about in this video, please just um, comment under here and I'm more than happy to like get you going with anything that you need getting going with. Um, okay, so now let's get into just the mindset. This is like my jam. This is my thing. Um, because think about this. <sighs> After your explant, let's say you're not feeling well and you're just in a funk and you're maybe like three or four weeks after your explant and you're thinking like, I'm still dealing with these symptoms. Like, what is going on? I thought I would be feeling better by now, right? And you start to have like doubt and worry. Those doubts and worries, they, they transform in our body. Like our body can pick up on the thoughts that are going on in our head. So typically, especially going through breast implant illness and going through an explant and everything like that and all the adjustments that we have to make, um, I find that most women experience worry, fear, guilt, and shame. Worry, fear, guilt, and shame. I have felt all of those, like sometimes at once um, throughout just my breast implant illness journey and preparing for my explant, like just the shame of like, what did I do? The guilt of what did I do? The fear of my surgery, the worry about my surgery. And then after my surgery of like the worry of, am I going to heal fast enough? The fear of like, what if this doesn't go away? Or like, did I develop an autoimmune issue? You know, and again, the shame of like, what did I do to myself? And the guilt of like, what did I do to myself? So these emotions, every, Every emotion is a normal emotion. We are humans. We do have a plethora of emotions that we are meant to experience and, you know, um, feel. So after your explant, I know there's going to be some moments, especially if you're going through like a detox flare or if you have an expectation that you should be feeling and healing better and faster than you are at this point, right? When we have those expectations and those expectations aren't met, we can get really hard on ourselves and feel like there's something wrong with us and there's something wrong with our body and we're not doing something right. Like, what are we missing? Why aren't I feeling good by now? We start to question things and we start to doubt our body and we don't trust in the process. So, starting from day one after explant and especially on those really hard days, um, just have complete trust in your body that she is doing what she needs to do as fast as she can do it in the order that she feels like she needs to do things, right? So like you might feel like, I want my hip joint pain to be gone and the ringing in my ears, um, but those things aren't gone yet, but maybe some other things are gone, right? Because she needed to kind of work on these things first and improve these things and then like, the fatigue and the brain fog, the things that you really wanted fixed first are kind of like over here and you'll get there. So just have faith that you will get there. You will recover and you are healthier without those implants in like period. Um, you can't convince me. I don't need data and research and follow the science to tell me anything different. Um, 
having those toxins inside of you, those heavy metals inside of you, no bueno. When you get them out, you are a healthier person. So just trust in your body, believe that you will heal, you know, um, call in that person that you want to be, how you want to show up, like all the things that you want to do now that like you're feeling better um, and all of that. Cause I do know, especially if you're going through like a detox flare that you can just doubt things, right? So getting more into just gratitude and love and patience and faith and joy um, and all of that. Affirmations are a great way to do this. Just telling yourself like, I am healing, I am safe and my body is on my side. I am healing, I am safe and my body is on my side. You know, we will get through this, I will get through this. And just keep like pumping yourself up with positivity. Um, grounding and doing some meditation, um, just really calming yourself and just calling in that faith, calling in that trust. Um, and also visualization. I'm huge into visualization. And so like if something's bothering me physically, I will focus in on that area and imagine it healed. Imagine it like without pain and imagine me like, let's say has something to do with my lungs or my heart, right? And I wasn't able to exercise because of that. I would like imagine myself exercising and get into like what that is gonna feel like when I get to exercise again, because like my issues are all fixed, like maybe my hip joint, I had bad hip joint when I had BII, made it really hard to exercise. So I would just like visualize and get myself into, um, you know, me just feeling good and being able to do everything. And I wanna make sure that I answered all the questions that you all had for me. Um, so how do I detox? Showed you that, when should you start? Told you that, um, five weeks, what do I take? So showed you all the prebiotics and then also just like vitamin C, B complex, um, probiotics. I know I'm gonna miss some, um, zinc and milk thistle, burdock root, binders, um, that whole jam it's all in the bii bridge just saying um why does it come in waves so this would just be my guess so after we have our explant surgery we're also recovering from the actual surgery now right so our body's also doing a lot of readjusting and rebuilding and repairing from the actual surgery um on top of just like adjusting to having all those toxins and the capsule taken out in one shot, right? So detox flares, I mean, they can happen for any reason. My guess would just be, again, your body's very smart and she knows what she's doing and she's gonna do things like as fast as she can or maybe she's gonna slow things down a little bit. So, you know, detox flare could just possibly be a big push of toxins out, um, which again, makes you feel brain fog, fatigue, headaches, irritability, all of that stuff. From what I've seen in my Facebook group, detox flares happen like a couple times within the first year after your explant. So for me, I had one at the four month post explant mark. And then like, I think I had one like at the 10 month post explant mark. So I have seen a couple women, I mean more than a couple women, but like a couple times a year for the first year, you'll probably have like a detox flare and it's gonna feel like all your BII symptoms are back, right? So again, it's just going back to trusting your body and being like, this is just a detox flare. Um, three things that I recommend for a detox flare are um, more water, um, binders and pouring into yourself. So self care and then also patience. Patience is just with everything. So just pouring into yourself, you know, taking it easy during a detox flare, um, you know, not questioning like, oh my God, what's going on? And, you know, again, like getting into the worry energy and the doubt energy, like I don't wanna be going back into BII, right? But just having that trust like, hey, this is what my body needs to do right now to get me to where I know I can be and will be. Because oftentimes things get really ugly and they don't feel good. 
before a healing happen it happens. So it can feel really icky and really muddy um, and just not good. And then all of a sudden you're gonna wake up and you're just gonna feel so much better. So sometimes, and this is just with life in general, right? We go through the mucky times to get, get to the better times. So just trust that, hey, this is what my body needs to do right now. I trust my body, I know you've got this, so let me just help you and I'm gonna rest, I'm gonna take some binders, I'm going to um, stay really hydrated and just you know, pour into yourself with some self-care and whatever you feel like you're um, up to doing um, ener energy-wise during a detox flare. Um, and that's all the questions that um, came through. Now, I do want to talk about the BII bridge for like two or three minutes. I'm going to keep it brief. So the BII bridge is a healing and detox program. When I created the, D, uh, the BII bridge, there wasn't anything available that I could see to help specifically women going through breast implant illness who were either preparing for an explant surgery or healing from an explant surgery. And I just knew like, when I was going through breast implant illness, if there was a program for me to follow that would have made the process easier, um, just for me to feel more calm and like confident, like I know what I need to be doing and when I need to be doing it and when I should be stopping things, like sign me up, I needed it because I was a hot mess when I was waiting to explant after I found out about BII. And my anxiety felt like it was just getting worse every single day and that's not an exaggeration. Let me grab some tea, hold on. So there's, at the time of this video, there's probably like 250 to 300 Facebook groups out there, support Facebook groups, all sorts of Facebook groups for breast implant illness, which is amazing, right? But inside those Facebook groups you have thousands of members and you have so much advice and opinions and suggestions and recommendation and a lot of times especially on the topic of detox it can be very overwhelming and very stressful and if you're like me when i get overwhelmed and stressed like i don't even start i don't even like i don't even do it because i don't even know where to start or what to do and it's just like hey i have all this information but i don't know how to implement it like what's the best you know this to buy how much of this do i need to buy like when do I start this? Is it okay to take? There's so many questions, right? And so when I created the BII Bridge, it's just week by week up to your explant surgery, what you should be doing. Um, and then after your explant surgery, it's like week by week, what you should be doing, um, you know, in order to recover and heal just a lot easier if I'm being honest. So in the pre-op phase, which is the fighter phase, that's the preparation phase. And the post-op phase is called the warrior phase. And that's the, the healing and the detox phase. So both are 12 weeks long. So I will lead you three months up to your surgery. And then I'm going to lead you three months out of your surgery. Both um, phases talk about... So BRIDGE is actually an acronym for body image, root cause, immune system, um, detox, gut health, and then emotions and exercise. So both phases talk about all that except the fighter phase does not talk about detox because we don't do detoxing um, while we're waiting to explant. But the warrior phase does go into the BII bridge detox protocol. BII, the uh, warrior phase is actually the most popular phase out of um, both of them. Some women either sign up for both of them or just the, um, the warrior phase for help with the detox. So it is a mind and body program. I have guided med meditations, visualizations, EFT sessions. I talk about stress and self-love and body image and exercise and the importance of moving your body and good sleep. Um, the immune system and your gut health in both phases. Um, because again, I truly do believe that the mind does have a powerful role in healing the body. And it's one of the aspects that I see a lot of women missing or forgetting or just not realizing how important it is 
when it comes to healing and recovering from an explant surgery. So, um, you know, we talk about supplements, of course, and nutrition, of course, because those are two very important things in order to heal and get your gut going and your immune system strong and stuff like that. But then there's also the whole other aspect of the emotional side of it and getting your emotions in a really positive place, um, pouring into you with self-care and, um, you know, I, I'm all about body image. That's what size happy is. So, you know, we do talk about body image and what it's like to see your breasts for the first time after explanting. So I will link the program down below. So if you're like, cool, like this is something I feel like I could do, um, definitely consider going through the BII Bridge program. I'm with you every step of the way, every day, every week, the whole time. It's how I kind of prefer it to be. It's not one of those programs where you sign up and then you never hear from the person that created it and you're like, hello, I have a question and like crickets. That's not how it is with me. So I want to be with you for the whole time. Um, you know, and I've gone through BII, obviously. I've gone through an explant surgery. So I not only have the knowledge and all of that, I have like the real world experience of going through it and like what that's like emotionally and physically for us. Um, and that's all I got for you today. So if you found this video helpful, and anyway, if you learned something new today, then, then definitely, I got a little twang there with my then, then definitely consider um, subscribing to my channel. And one of the biggest ways that you can support me is if you did find this video specifically to be helpful, then share the URL link inside any of your favorite Facebook groups or Facebook pages that have to do with like breast implant illness and share it in there and just be like, oh my God, I got so much out of this video. It's really helpful, whatever you wanna say. Um, but that would really help the channel and it would help me to be able to help more women who are going through this because let's face it, we all need help when it comes to this. I'm three years post explant and I still need help. So. Um, I think I covered everything today in this video. I know it's been like 40 minutes. We're good, we're good, but we covered a lot. So if you have any questions about specifics of anything, definitely let me know, comment below, or you can email me at christina at sizehappy.net and we can talk there. So hope to see you inside of the Facebook group, Breast Implant Illness, Rejuvenation and Education with Christina so we can get to know each other a little bit better. And, um, Thanks for watching this video and spending all this time with me. 